I'm so hungry. Mm. <laughs> What's going on, Swim fans? In today's video, I'm gonna share with you what I eat in a day of heavy training. Breakfast, lunch, dinner, snacks, hydration, and everything in between. We're gonna break down the calories, the macros. Just remember, I'm not your doctor, or am I? The first thing I do when I wake up is stretch, drink some water, and immediately try and do something active. I like to just stay hydrated with water, and I break my fast after the first workout. Just finished morning workout, 58 minutes, burned over 400 calories. It's the best way to start the day. For breakfast, I had two dates, six dried apricots, a banana, two mini bagels, and cream cheese. The most important thing after a workout is having carbs, not protein. Protein's important, especially if you're trying to build muscle, but you have to fuel your body with carbs because that's gonna give you the energy that you need to make it through the day. Dates have an excellent nutrition profile. They're high in fiber and antioxidants. Dried apricots are just as nutritious as the fresh ones, minus the water. They have iron, fiber, potassium, and vitamins A, C, and E. Now, bananas are one of the best post-workout snacks because it's portable, high in fiber, it has carbs, potassium, and bananas can reduce inflammation. And then to top it off, bagels are filled with carbs, which is how you fuel for the day and a great way to recover. I topped it off with two full cups of water and now a few hours later, here we are at the pool. I like to have three to five hours where I don't have any food, just hydrating with water before I actually go and do the workout. Because when I swim with a full stomach, I just feel really heavy and you don't actually need that much fuel, especially if your workout is gonna be 60, 90 minutes or even less than that. But here we are at the pool, it's time to get in. All right, so today's workout is called Aerobic Crush. I have it loaded on my Apple Watch. It's 2,400 meters. We're gonna do a little bit of technique work, but also the IM. I love doing every single stroke when I train. And then we're gonna do some longer aerobic swims, including some 300s pull. Let's get it. Boom. Oh. It's paddle time, baby. Let's go, let's go. Three forty, baby. Let's go. Workout complete. I am so hungry. Ah, oh, feed me. Over the last few years, I've started to take my nutrition way more seriously. I used to eat whatever I felt like. I wasn't hydrated, I wasn't eating enough protein, and now I'm more aware of what I eat, I practice portion control, and to my own surprise, I started feeling better, and I'm stronger, and I'm swimming faster than ever. I wanted to take my nutrition to the next level, so I joined the Genetic Reboot Program, where you submit a DNA sample, then they test 38 different genes, and the results include information about muscle performance, food sensitivity, and vitamin absorption. It was only during my consultation with an expert nutritionist that I learned I'm lactose intolerant. Yeah, I know, right? I went three decades of my life not knowing I'm lactose intolerant. Through this consultation, I also reaffirmed that I'm extremely sensitive to caffeine. The founder of the company, Erica Beanie, is a former collegiate swimmer, and she was able to translate my DNA results into a personalized plan and she works with some of the world's most recognizable swimming names including 50 Olympians, gold medalists, NCAA champions, world record holders and top masters athletes around the world. Her motto is not every athlete should eat and take supplements the same way because we are all different. And I totally agree, and that's why I'm pumped to be partnering with Biney Wellness Building to help more swimmers take a science-backed approach to nutrition. Because after all, you are what you eat. So check out the link in the description to book a free nutrition consultation and mention my swim pro when you book to get an additional three months of support after completing the genetic reboot program. That's a $60 value exclusive for you guys. Workout is complete, now it's time to eat lunch. After a swim workout, I am so hungry and it's so tempting to just binge eat anything in sight. I always take down one to two cups of water before I start eating anything. Today's lunch kicked off with some saganaki, opa, flaming Greek cheese and pita bread. 
I know I just mentioned that I found out I'm lactose intolerant, but I feel fine with a snack here and there, and it's drinking a lot of milk is what dehydrates me. The pita bread is a great quick carb and a tasty appetizer. For the main dish, I had a giant summer salad topped with grilled chicken. 12 ounces of lettuce, two ounces of strawberries, two ounces of mandarin orange, one ounce of walnuts, two ounces of blue cheese, six cucumber slices, and four ounces of strawberry vinaigrette dressing topped with six ounces of grilled chicken. The salad was 889 calories and absolutely delicious. Before lunch was over, I finished my sister's french fries with some ketchup, and my lunch in total was 1,223 calories, and I had about four cups of water. During my swim workout, I had prime hydration drink. Sports drinks have electrolytes to replenish the sodium, chloride, and potassium loss when you sweat. And yes, you do sweat when you swim. Adding in this hydration drink, I'm at 1,800 calories for the day. On average, a woman will need to eat 2,000 calories per day and a man 2,500 calories per day just to maintain weight at a moderate activity level. Now, of course, that's just the average and it really depends on your body composition and what your goals are. Today, I did two workouts totaling an additional 1,000 calories burned. So that means just to not lose weight, I need to eat an additional 1,000 calories, which puts my total for the day at 3,500 calories. So if you're trying to gain weight, you're gonna need to eat more. And if you're trying to lose weight, you'll have to be in what's called a caloric deficit. You're eating less than you're burning. Right now with my routine, I lift weights six times per week and I swim three times per week. So in total, I'm doing about five to 10 hours of physical strenuous activity every single week. Back in college, we used to train six to 8,000 meters every single workout. And in total, we were putting in 15 to 20 hours per week. And I was easily eating 4,000 calories per day. And this is actually pretty normal for athletes that are training three to four hours every single day. And I know that sounds like a lot, but if you're trying to be really good at something, if you're putting in the work, you need to make sure you're fueling your body. And all this talk is making me super hungry, so it's time to get some dinner. Dinner, I had two chicken enchiladas, fresh, homemade, so good. That includes tortilla bread, chicken breasts, black beans, diced tomatoes, Spanish rice, topped with mixed cheese and cilantro. It was so good. It's time for a little bit of evening dessert. Let's go. Here we are eating a beautiful dessert in a Turkish cafe. It's absolutely amazing. And you don't have to demonize food. You can eat dessert. You worked hard. A little bit of dessert ain't gonna kill you. Today, all included, I have 3,146 calories, 269 grams of carbs, 136 grams of fat, and 176 grams of protein. Here are some pro tips for all swimmers out there trying to take their nutrition to the next level. Number one is to eat protein. So many people, athletes and not, are not eating enough protein, so make sure you're getting those calories in. Number two is to make sure you have enough hydration over the course of the day. Right from the moment you wake up, drink some water, you should have easily eight to 10 or 12 cups of water if you're an athlete and you're training. And tip number three, listen to your body. We're all different. Take a personalized approach to your nutrition because after all, you are what you eat. So make it count. And if you wanna take your swimming to the next level, watch this video right over here. I'll see you over there and happy swimming.